14, begin reading with verse number 22. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side, while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into a mountain apart to pray. And the evening was come, he was there alone. But the ship was tossed in the midst of the sea. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary. And in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. And straightway Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I, be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he, was, when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid and began, beginning to sink. He cried out to the Lord, Save me. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and called him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? And when they were come into the ship, the wind ceased. Then they that were in the ship came, of a, came and worshipped him, saying, Of a truth, thou art the Son of God. Father, we thank you, Lord, again for this blessed opportunity to come to the house of the Lord. God, I pray that you'd help us now. Lord, forgive us of sin, failure. God, I pray, God, you'd help us. Lord, we know, God, we're nothing without thee, but, God, we know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And I pray right now, God, the Spirit of God would move here today, take over. God, use me, God, to preach the message, God, that you've laid upon our heart. God, again, I can't do it, but, God, I know you can, and I pray thy will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. If we title our message today, be simply this, be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. I, it seems like the Lord has laid messages upon our heart as of late to, to uh, try to help people. Uh, folks are going through hard times. I know that. Folks are going through battles. I know that. There are storms in your life. I know that. Uh, thinking back upon my own life for the last uh, year or so, it's been a battle. It's been a storm. But guess what? Jesus has been there all the time. And we read this story, and, and this is a true story, by the way, and I want this to be a message of help and encouragement to you. And we see the setting here. Jesus had just fed 5,000 people with five biscuits and a can of, and a can of sardines. And that message didn't, uh, didn't make it all the way. Sixteen minutes into that, and then the battery died. Frank said, I was preaching too loud. And I was preaching too long, and the batteries just couldn't handle it. He went and bought some super batteries to put in this mic. Uh, but anyway, Jesus had just fed 5,000 people. He had just came from a setting where John the, John the Baptist had he, he got the news that he had been beheaded. And now he had fed 5,000 people, and he needed some time alone with the Father. Now, Jesus was man, yet he was God. But he felt the need that he would have some time alone with the Father. So the disciples, he says, the, the disciples uh, were constrained. Uh, the Lord said, you all need to go. Uh, you need to get it. But, but Lord, we don't want to go. We want to stay with you. But no, I want you to get in the ship, and I want you to go to the other side. But Lord, how are you going to get to the other side? And Jesus, you know, I'm reading between the lines here. So finally Jesus said, y'all get in the ship and I'll be alone. So as, as, he, as he went uh, to the mountain to pray and spend time alone with the Father, the disciples, they got in their boat. Maybe it was one of their fishing boats that they owned. But they got in the boat and they... Uh, determined that they were going to do just exactly what Jesus said to do. And there's something to be learned here. Uh, sometimes we might not necessarily believe that what the Lord wants us to do is the right thing. Now, I've been there. Lord, are you sure? God, sure. Listen, I should never question what God wants me to do. You should never question what the Lord 
wants you to do, but we should be obedient to do the will of the Father. Now, uh, Jesus needed some time alone. He wanted to go pray. He wanted to go talk to God. So we see the necessity of prayer. If Jesus needed to pray and talk to the Father, surely we must need to pray and talk to the Father. So Jesus went away to pray. The disciples are on the ship, and they, be they become obedient to the Lord. We see that the disciples are obedient to the will of the Savior. How much more should, be, should we be willing to do the will of the Savior? Everybody in this building tonight, this morning, you're either in the will of God or you're out of the will of God. Uh, there's no middle ground. I'm either in God's will or I'm out of God's will. I'm either in fellowship with Him or I'm not in fellowship with Him. I'm in fellowship with God's people or I'm not in fellowship with God's people. Well, I'll tell you, friend, you're here this morning in the will of God. I know that much. You're in the will of God because you're here. But your personal life, are you in the will of God? Are you in His will? Are you where God wants you to be? And if you can say yes to that, then this message will help you a whole lot. And if you're not in the will of God, I want to tell you something. The only way you can get help from God is to be in the will of God. And I pray, God, keep me in your will. God, help me to stay in your plan. God, help me to walk after your spirit and not after this flesh. God, I want you to keep me in your will. I want to stay with you because that's where I'm safe. Now, the disciples, after being constrained, they were obedient to the will of the Lord. And they, uh, they as they were commanded by the Savior, they were willing to follow him even though they wanted to stay around him. Now listen, sometimes Jesus will call. I, I, I know quite much about missionary families. I've got one. I've been around several. And the Lord will call a man or a woman and he will say, I want you to go to the far reaches of the earth and I want you to carry the gospel. Now that's hard. So that family, in order to carry the gospel, I know a family right now that's getting ready or may have already gone. They're moving up north and they're leaving everything that they have. You say, well, that's not out of the United States. Friend, it doesn't matter. If you're away from home, you're away from home. And that family's got to give everything they've got now. If they're going across the sea, if they're going to some faraway land, they've got to sell everything they got. No way to take care of it unless they got someone to do that. They give up everything they've got and say, Lord, I'm going to serve you, and I'm going with you. I want to be in your will. And those families that do that in the will of God are among the happiest people that I know in the will of God. One family, God called them somewhere, and they went to an uh, uh, unknown, I don't know where it was, Brazil somewhere. They went, and, and uh, they got over there, and there were snakes everywhere. And I mean, everywhere they went, there were snakes, and they were poisonous snakes. And the man was afraid to let his youngins run around and play because of the poisonous snakes. But he knew that that's where God wanted him to do. His, his wife knew that that's where they were supposed to be, and yet he was fearful and afraid because of all the snakes. He made it for a little while, and he got discouraged and said, I'm not raising my family this way. I'm not going to raise my family in these conditions. God, I'm going home. Now, he was safe while he was in the will of God. Those years that he was there, none of the children got bit by snakes. So he brought his family back home to the United States. And he got back home, and he settled down into life. He gave up the mission work. He settled down in life, got him a job, bought him a house, and all was well, so he thought, until one day he got a call at work saying, please hurry to the hospital. Your youngins are in the hospital. And both of them had been bitten by rattlesnakes. And they went home to be with the Lord. Friend, you're safe in the will of God, but if you're not in the will of God, anything can happen in your life. God will do whatever is necessary in my life and in your life to, to show us what His will is and what His plan is. 
So he told the disciples, here's where you're going to be in my will. He said, you need to get in the ship. You need to go to the other side. I'm going to pray, and you need to be in my will. So we see that the disciples in this storm are obedient to the will of God. Not necessarily did they agree with it, but they were willing, and so they became obedient to the command of Jesus when he said, get in the boat and go to the other side. Let me ask you today, are you in the boat with Jesus? Good place to be. But you say, preacher, you've already read the rest of the story. They go into a storm. Yes, they do. But they were in the boat with the Lord no matter what. They were still in His will. Now listen, sometimes the will of God might get a little frightening. Sometimes you don't know what the next step is going to be. Sometimes you, listen, we don't have to see all God's plan ahead of us right immediately. If we'll stay close to the Lord and if we'll follow Him step by step, amen, it'll all be all right no matter where our path takes us. Amen. I'm bad to want to look down the road and see what's ahead of me. But you know what? God only let us see so far. Because I know, and you know, as believers, as children of God, as, as, as His young, as that we're going to face adversity. I've not faced all the adversity that I'm going to face in my lifetime. You have, no matter how young you are or how old you are, you have not yet faced all the adversity that's coming to you in life. I don't want to discourage you. I'm going to tell you that that adversity, those problems, those sorrows, those heartaches, those storms that you'll face, you'll face them much better in the will of God. Amen. And I can tell you with all assurance, I can tell you with knowledge that as long as you're in the will of God, the storms that you face will be much better handled if you stay close to the master. Now we see another person here. We see that the disciples were in the storm and we see that they were in his will, yet they were still in the storm. And I want to tell you, while you're still in that storm, don't quit rowing. Now, they got out in the middle of the sea. They were out, way out there. They weren't just a few steps from the shore. This was kind of a blessing to me when I realized that they were out in the middle. Maybe four or five miles out in the, in the Sea of Galilee. And as they were out there, they got out there by getting in the boat and had the sails going or they were rowing. Well, they got out and storms come up quickly out there on that uh, in the Sea of Galilee. It's uh, 600 some feet below sea level and all the, the cold air off the mountains rushed down into that warm air and it causes a terrible storm sometimes. And they were out there and they were rowing away and the storm came up. The wind was blowing. It was howling and they were thought they were going to sink. Now listen, had they forgotten that Jesus had just fed 5,000? With five loaves and two fishes. Had they forgotten that just previous to that, they'd been out in a storm where Jesus was in the boat asleep, and they woke him up, and he saved them from that. Yet even though Jesus wasn't bodily present in that ship, Jesus was with them. And they didn't feel him, but, they, but he was there. Sometimes, friend, we may feel like we're in the storm all alone. But I want to tell you, if you're a child of God and the will of God, Jesus is with you no matter how you feel. You know what the devil wants you to feel? He wants you to feel like you're all alone. He wants you to feel like there's nobody else in the world facing what you're facing. He wants you to feel like that there's no way that you'll ever make it out of this, that you're going to sink in the storm. I want to tell you something. When the devil comes and says that, you tell the devil, I'm staying with the Lord in my storm. God's bigger than you are. God's bigger than the devil is. And if you'll stay with God in the storm, everything will be all right. Now, we can see the, we can see the disciples and we can see them out there rowing in the storm. And I'll say to you today, keep rowing. Don't give up. Don't give in to the fear of the storm. I could ask you today, how many of you have been fearful in a storm? Everybody in here, I know there's come. I, listen, I've been through storms in my spiritual life when I honestly, I did not know what to do. And I was scared. 
I was afraid. Lord, what are you doing? Lord, what am I doing? Lord, can you hear me? God, can you hear me? I prayed before in this storm, and I know that everything's right between me and God. And I've got down on my face before God, and I've cried out to Him for help. Lord, will you help me? Sometimes I felt like it never got out of, out of the room. But there's one thing, friend, I know for sure. If I'm in the will of God, there's nothing between me and Him or me and my fellow man then I know God is hearing my prayer even though I don't feel like it. We walk by faith and not by feelings and not by sight. We walk by faith. So they were there and they were rowing along and, and then what, what happened? In the fourth watch of the night, Jesus comes to them. See, he didn't come immediately when the storm started. Sometimes we have a storm and we expect Jesus to show up right then. But God's teaching us something when we're in a battle. God's teaching us something when we're in a storm. Those old trees like that oak tree out there in the front and the side yard. Over, I don't know how long that thing's been here. It's been here forever and ever. And I know it would take an act of Congress for anything ever get done to that oak tree. I know that. But don't worry. I've never thought about cutting that oak tree. I like that oak tree. Unless it just falls, amen, it'll stay there as, 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 as long as we're here, amen. But that oak tree has stood the test of some terrible storms. Now, I don't know if it blew around here the other night like it did in my house, but I mean the wind blew, and it blew hard. We had one wind gust of 37 mile an hour, you know, and I was hanging on to the chair inside the house just keeping going, getting blown away. But that old, that old tree out there, it's faced some 40 and 50 mile an hour winds, I guess, over the years. But you know why that old tree's still standing out there? Because every time the winds blow, it's dug its, hallelujah, God, it's dug its roots in a little bit deeper. Let me tell you something, friend. When you face the howling storms of this life, don't, do not give up, but just dig your, dig your spiritual roots in a little bit deeper. Pray just a little bit harder and say, God, I want to stand the storm. I want you to help me in the storm. God, I'm not asking you to let it go away. If it's your will, God, do it. But if I have to stay in this storm, God, help me to stand and not to fall in the storm. Oh, my friend, I've seen too many fall in the storm. Listen, it's one thing to fall in the storm, but it's another thing to stay down there after you've fallen in the storm. I've, I've done that. I've, I, have, I have crashed to the pressure of the storm before. But one thing I don't want to do is stay down. Amen. I want to get up and go with the Jesus. So we see them in the storm. And in the third watch, Jesus came to them. Now the third watch was sometime around 3, 4 o'clock in the morning as the, as the night watch went. Now the storm began early. Jesus was praying. Jesus had been praying all night. He knew what was going on in the lives of those disciples. He knew that they were out there in the middle of the storm, but he also knew that they would be safe because he knew that he was going to take care of them. And he knew all about them, even though they couldn't see him, they couldn't feel his presence, they couldn't talk to him, hallelujah. They, he knew they were there, amen. I'm liking this. I don't know if you are or not, but I'm liking this a lot. Hey, man, I'm glad that sometimes even though I don't feel him, I know, thank God, that he's there. Hey, man, he's there. Mm -mm. You might all open that door. I'm about to have me a spell. Hallelujah. I'm glad to know that he's there. Hey, man, he's there. So they, be, they, they kept on rowing. They kept, kept on toiling, working in the storm. Don't give up when the storms are raging. Keep working, amen. Keep doing the will of God. Keep doing His will. Testify for Him. Tell about His goodness when the storm's on, amen. Dig in and go on for the Lord. Hallelujah. Keep rowing. Amen. Keep rowing. I don't know about the fourth watch or not, whether they'd about ready to give up or not. Maybe they were thinking, if Jesus were only here, like he was the last time, maybe he would calm this storm. That's man's thinking. But Jesus was still there. 
I tell you, friend, he never took his eyes off his disciples. He never takes his eyes off of you and I. So we see, we see the storm. We see the disciples in the storm. Now we see this man Peter in the storm. You know what Peter did to, him, to that storm? He walked on it. Think about that. Now we read this and sometimes we discredit Peter an awful lot because he sunk in the waves. How many of you here this morning has ever walked on water? Anybody? How many of you ever here has ever tried to walk on water? Seriously. We would have one. Did you make it? Oh, you have a little faith. Now listen, they, you know, I know there's these trick things they do with these big old surfboard things they put on your feet and you walk around on water. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about a man in his sandals or barefooted. Well, Peter walked on his storm. Now that storm hadn't didn't settle down one bit. It was it was boisterous. It, the, you know, the winds, I, we were out there in the waves on that on it was four or five feet high. I mean, it was it was rough, and it wasn't even a storm. The sun was shining that day, and it was rough. So I can imagine the hurricane force winds that came around that night. But but Peter did walk on the water. He did something no human has ever accomplished. And you know how he did it? He did it by faith. But see, we always look over all of that and say, "Well, look, he sunk. He didn't believe a thing. He believed enough to get out of the boat." Amen. He, but he had enough faith to get out of the boat. Now, they saw, they saw Mark says that Jesus would have passed them by, but they cried out to him. I wonder how many times, take a little sidetrack here, I wonder how many times Jesus may be coming to help us in the storm. We don't look for him. We're not asking for his help. We don't cry out to him. And he goes by. But they in fear thought it might be a spirit and they were afraid and they cried out to the Lord and they said, Lord, he said, it is fear not, it is I, be not afraid. Oh, what words from the Savior. Don't you know that was soothing words to their ears? It's I, fear not, it's I, be not afraid. Be not afraid. And Peter says, Lord, if it's really you, Bid me to come to you on the water. Now, Jesus didn't say, Peter, you get out of the boat and come to me. Jesus didn't say, I'm going to keep you from falling if you'll just get out of the boat and come to me. Jesus didn't say, all right, Peter, I know you got more faith than anybody else. You come on. James, come here a minute. How you doing? You shut up. Now, James, did you think a bit about that when you got up and walked up here to me? Now, James had enough faith to believe that floor was going to hold him up long enough to get up here to me, didn't he? I believe with all my heart that when, 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 the, when the Lord said, All right, Peter, you come on, you know what he said to him? He said, Come, Peter. Peter and his Peter was a very outspoken man. Peter was a was a man that was easily to take one foot out of his mouth so he could insert the other. He was very enthusiastic. But it reminds me a lot of me. Amen. That's who he reminds me of a lot of me. But he was always enthusiastic about doing something right. You remember when he was around the Lord, he was always, Lord, let's build three tabernacles. Lord. Lord, let's do this, Lord. And he said, Look, there's Peter again out there, everybody else. And there's Peter looking around. Well, if it's him, he'll bid me to come to him. Lord, bid me to come to thee. Jesus says, come. Peter said, I'm going. Now, the other disciples sat there, one whom Jesus loved. You know, laid his head, one not saying a lot. The other one's not doing, doing anything. But Peter said, boys, I'm going to him. I'm, I'm getting out of here. I'm going to Jesus. He, that's where I'll be safe. Now, this may take a different twist than what you might have ever heard in this message. But Peter, he, he got out of that boat. He climbed up over the rails. 
So, Lord, I'm a coming. And he steps out on them waves. Boy, and he, hey, it didn't, he didn't just step out and sink. He walked on the water. And he was doing good. And then he said, uh-oh. Man, them waves are high. Man, that wind's blowing. Lord, and down he went. You know what his mistake was? He quit looking at the Lord. He stepped out of that boat and he started to Jesus and then he looked this way. Oh, no, this looks bad. Oh, no, this is bad. Lord, save me. Now, how far did he walk on the water? I don't know. He, I don't know how far Jesus was. He may have walked 10 feet. He may have walked 100 feet. I don't know. But as long as his eyes on the Lord, he was in good shape. Y'all with me now? No matter what the storm is, as long as our eyes are on Jesus, we're in good shape. We're doing well as long as our eyes are on the Lord. But many times we get to doing like Peter did and we start looking at the circumstances around us. Whatever the circumstances that might be causing our storm. You know, I've faced a lot of battles in my life. Many of them, you know, many different things. Health, I've faced some issues with that. Not much now, but I've faced a few issues with that. I've I've uh, had uh, family issues where, you know, where it didn't look good for family members. And as long as I've kept my eyes on the Lord, everything's been all right. But when I got to looking around, maybe it's a financial issue. I've dealt with some of those before too. And if I go looking around, Lord, how are you going to do this? Lord, how are you going to do that? Lord, how in the world is this going to happen? And I, I'd fret and worry and fear about how something was going to get done. And guess what I found out? It's always, always worked out. God always comes through. He's always on time. He never is late. And Jesus came to them at the third watch of the night. And as he came to them, he wasn't too late to help them. He wasn't too late to save them. He did not let them sink. And when Peter went down and cried out to the Lord for help, what did he do? He reached his hand way down and said, Come on, come on, Peter. And he picked him up. said, I'll carry you back to the boat. <laughs> Now, did, Peter, did he carry Peter back to the boat or did, people, did Peter walk back to the boat with him? I don't know. But I know one thing, that when he stepped inside that boat, guess what happened? The waves lay down, the wind ceased, and everything was well in a moment's time. I'll tell you something, friend. That storm in your life, it may be raging, it may be rolling, it may be you may be thinking you're going down. Listen, you'll never go down if you keep your eyes on the master. The waves may get higher, the, the battle may get rougher, the storm may get rougher. But am I telling you what today, friend, if you keep your eyes on the master, if you keep your eyes on the Savior, then everything will be well. So we see that Peter, even though... You, you know, Jesus said, said to him, Peter, wherefore, do, wherefore didst thou doubt? Oh, ye of little faith. And I'm reminded again of me, oh, sometimes me of little faith. But give Peter credit where credit's due. He did have enough faith to get out of the boat. You know, we, that boat, we can look at that in, in another way. We can look at that as being a boat of, of comfort. We get in a boat of comfort sometimes and we don't want to get out of that boat of comfort. You know, we get into that boat where everything's well, I'm healthy, got plenty of money, I ain't been there yet. I got everything well, everything's good, I'm comfortable with the way I am. And God may say, I want you to do this. Lord, I don't want to get out of my boat. Lord, I don't want to get out of my comfort zone. I don't want to get out of what, what I'm doing. Everything's going good, God. I don't want to quit doing what I'm doing. I want to keep doing what I'm doing. And Lord say, I want you to get out of the boat and do something special for me. You know what it takes to get out of that boat? It takes faith. We ought to turn, determine in our heart that if God wants us to, we're willing to get out of the boat of comfort. I say, Lord, whatever you got. Whatever you want me to do, Lord. I'm willing to do and get out of the boat and go to the Lord. Keep your eyes on Him, you won't sink. No matter what circumstances come your way, keep your eyes on the Lord 
and you will not sink. And so we see that we see Peter in the storm. And then we see also the last thing this morning, we see Jesus in the storm. Verse number 27, straightway Jesus spake unto him, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Jesus knew the storm that, were, that they were in. He knew it well. You know why? Because he allowed it to happen. Jesus knew before they ever got in the boat and started to the other side that they were going to be in the storm. He knew that. But they were safer. Again, I say to you, they were safer in that boat, in the storm, in the will of Jesus than they were back with him on the mountain of prayer. And I'm sure they probably did some praying while they were out there in the storm. You know, we're much more conscious to pray when things are going not so well. But I like what the church bulletin said this morning. True prayer is a way of life, not just a case of emergency. Most of us wait until we are troubled, then we pray. Wonder what would happen if some morning we could, would wake up and say, Anything I can do for you today, Lord? See, sometimes our prayers are limited to when we've got problems, but we, the Bible says that we're to pray without ceasing. The Bible says we're to pray. Sometimes just to say thank you, Lord. So Jesus was there in the storm. He knew what they were going through. He knows my storm. He knows your, your storm. Jesus came a long way to help them. Like I say, he was out in the middle of the, of, of the Sea of Galilee out there uh, a long way. And you know what? He didn't catch a boat and go out there. Jesus walked the whole way on that storm. That storm had no control over Christ. Now he stepped out in the waves and he just walked on the You know why? Because he is in command of the storm. He knows, friend, it, nothing's going on in your life that he don't know about. No hardship, no worry. Nothing's going on in, in your life that he don't know about. He commands that. He Listen, he's got his feet on it. He's got his hands on it. He knows what's going on. Lord, thank you for that. But why did he let him come to teach his senses? He, can, he lets them come in our lives to teach us and to help us to grow. And those disciples learn that Jesus was still the same as the one that fed the 5,000. He's still the one uh, that, that had been able to uh, heal the sick and to raise the dead. And Jesus was, he, they were growing, knowing that the storm they faced, Jesus would be there. And Peter learned a lot real quick. I better keep my eyes on Jesus. I'm going to sink. Hey, we better keep our eyes on the Lord or we'll sink. But don't be afraid to get out of the boat and go to Jesus. So Jesus came to them in the third watch of the night. He came a long way to help them. He came all the way from heaven to help us. Amen. He came all the way from glory to save our soul. Surely we can walk to them. If you're in a storm today, remember, you're not alone. If you're facing a battle today, remember, you're not alone. If you watch the world, if you look at the world, you'll fail. But if you look at Jesus, all is well. Keep your eyes on the Savior. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And in the storm. In your distress, you cry unto the Lord. That's what Peter did in his distress. He cried unto the Lord. And what was his favorite words? What was his words that he said? Lord, save me. Lord, save me. Now, friend, today, if you're here and you don't know Jesus, if you're lost without God, you're facing this world, and you're facing this world all alone. You're, on, you're in it by yourself. You're in it without the help of God. I don't know how people do it. I, I do not know how people go through this life without God's help. Surely it must not be a happy life. But if you're here today saved in God's grace, I want to tell you something. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He will see us through. And as believers, I don't know what we might face in the coming years. Hey, I don't know what the, the church may face in the coming year but I'm determined by the help of God to keep my eyes on the Lord God help me 
keep my eyes on Jesus. If you're here today lost without God, why don't you come today and get in the ship? Why don't you come today and get in the boat of salvation and then you'll be in the boat of comfort? While everyone stands, every head bowed, no one looking around. I want to pray for someone.